I'm George Anastasia, and this is BigTrial.net, sponsored by the Beasley Firm. It's a new website, and what we hope to do is cover the major criminal trials in the Philadelphia area. My colleague, Raf Cipriano, has already covered the FUMO trial and is focusing on the priest abuse trials in Common Pleas Court. I hope to take a serious look at the trial of Kabani Savage, a North Philadelphia drug kingpin, in federal court later this month. Right now, I'm covering the Legambi trial, my boss Joe Legambi and six co-defendants charged with racketeering conspiracy. That case is going to the jury and we're waiting for a verdict. Thirty-three days of testimony and legal arguments over a three-month period has led to this. A jury is about to decide the fate of my boss Joe Legambi and six co-defendants in a mob racketeering case here in federal court in Philadelphia. Prosecutors have portrayed the organization as largely dysfunctional, a mob that didn't quite have its hand on a steering wheel. It was engaged in gambling, loan sharking, extortion, and video poker machines. Defense attorneys have argued repeatedly during the length of this trial that this is a mob unlike any other. In the words of Legambi's lawyer, Edwin Jacobs, we aren't who they said we are. What they are, who they are, is the fundamental question as this thing plays out. Jacobs has tried to portray the Legambi organization as almost a benevolent or benign group of Italian-American males who hang out together in South Philadelphia. So what are we talking about? The Sons of Italy, the Knights of Columbus, or Cosa Nostra? That seemed to be the basis of the defense. Whether it will fly with the jury is a fundamental question. More important is the government was able to use tape recordings of different defendants talking about bookmaking, loan sharking, cracking heads, and those kind of tapes, whether you describe these defendants as benign, benevolent, insignificant, street corner gangsters, those kind of tapes tend to support the allegations that this was a criminal enterprise engaged in gambling, loan sharking, and extortion. At the end of the day, that's all that really matters. They also built the case, as they always do, around the testimony of mob informants. One of the keys in this case was Louis Bentfinger Lou Monticello, a close associate of co-defendant George Borghese. Monticello spent close to three days on the witness stand, first telling a story about how he ran Borghese's bookmaking and loan sharking operation while Borghese was serving a 14-year prison term for a previous conviction of racketeering. He was, in fact, who he had been on the streets, full of bravado, full of himself. The question with Monticello was, was he credible? You didn't have to like him. The question was, did the jury believe him? And that's what we'll find out as deliberations begin. So there's a lot more in the case when you start to assess Legambi's fate, Anthony Steno, Joseph Massi Massimino, Joseph Licata, Damian Canalecchio, and Gary Badalini. In the midst of this trial, as the prosecution was about to wrap up its phase, there was a mob hit down in South Philadelphia, and a mobster connected to this organization, Anthony Nicodemo, was arrested. On December 12th, just as the prosecution was wrapping up its case in the Legambi racketeering trial, Gino DiPietro was gunned down here in the 2700 block of Eisminger Street. According to law enforcement, a man wearing a ski mask ran up on him, shot him two or three times with a 357 Magnum. The hitman then jumped into an SUV and fled the scene. Within 30 minutes of the shooting, Anthony Nicodemo, the owner of that SUV, was arrested at his home about three blocks from here. Police allegedly found the murder weapon inside that SUV, and Nicodemo was arrested and charged with murder conspiracy. The murder of DiPietro cast a pall over the Legambi trial because the defense had argued continually that this wasn't a violent mob, yet Nicodemo was a part of the organization. So what does that say about the defense? Nicodemo has long been a suspect in the murder of John Johnny Gons Casasanto in 2003. The Casasanto murder is one of three unsolved gangland hits that authorities would like to lay on the doorstep of mob boss Joe Legambi. The question in law enforcement and underworld circles is, will Nicodemo hold up? Or will he try to get out from underneath the criminal problems he's facing by cutting the deal with authorities? What the federal government, the FBI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office would like to hear from him is details about the Casasanto hit. Who was there? Who was involved? And as important, who set it up and who ordered it? If Nicodemo decides to play that bargaining ship and cooperate with authorities, then my boss, Joe Legambi, and several other defendants 
may find themselves back in court facing much more serious charges. I'm George Anastasia for BigTrial.net.